Okay, we're back, and we're going to be looking at the production of magnetic fields. Uh, we know a little bit about Ampere's Law, and that's quite a bit easier to use than what we're about to do here, um, which is the Biot-Sava uh, rule for finding magnetic fields. And most importantly, in terms of concepts, is the fact that all magnetism that we know about um, is due to moving charges. And what's also kind of weird about this, and we've seen in the lab, is the fact that these magnetic fields don't radiate from the moving charges, but rather they circulate around the moving charges. Um, when you put compass needles ar uh, around a wire that's carrying a current, those compass needles all point tangent to some circle, and that's the circulating magnetic field. So these aren't radial vectors. Um, now mathematically, if you want to handle these things, uh, it, it really is necessary to make use of cross products. And that's exactly what the Biot-Savall law does. So what we have here is, in the box, is, is the main equation that we have for a single moving particle. It could be an electron, a proton, anything with charge. And when it moves, it produces this magnetic field that circulates. So that cross product, the, the velocity cross r hat, is the mathematical way to handle circulations. So the case we're going to outline here is how to use Biot-Sava on a straight wire that has ends, so like a, a real wire, go figure. <laughs> it's not an infinitely long one. So uh, the two ends are negative A and A. Okay, and we're just looking for the magnetic field on the, the bisecting axis. We need that symmetry to keep this calculation um, doable, you know, e easy enough where we can just do it by ourselves. And we also need to make one small modification to this boxed equation for a point charge. Basically what we're doing is, is we have to break up the current into little pieces. And this is what we do for any kind of integral. You have to break something up into pieces and then add up all, all those little pieces. So uh, this DL that I have drawn on, on the picture is just a, a little segment of the wire, a little segment of the current. And that segment is a certain distance away from the point on the axis that we're looking at. So there, there's our r. And from the triangle here, that, that's just going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay. Now, when, when we look at this Biot-Sava equation, we've got this cross product, the current crossed with the r hat. Now what is r hat? Well, in this case, we're, we're saying that the current has a direction going up. That's our first vector. Um, r hat points from the current element down to where we're trying to find the B field. So it's actually pointing along, you know, down along this radius line here. That's our r hat. Okay. Um, now the thing is, uh, this cross product, you know, which way is the magnetic field pointing out on that axis? Well, if you do I cross R hat, your thumb is I, your index finger is the R hat, and so if, if you do our right hand rule uh, with, with the three fingers, your middle finger points into the screen or into your page. The quick way of doing this actually is when you have a circulating magnetic field around a straight wire is to do the curly right hand rule. And so that means that you have the magnetic field coming out of the screen on the left side of the wire, loops around, and then goes into the screen. So it's either way, the magnetic field is into the screen out here. Okay, and that's what the right hand rules are for, is for direction. But to calculate this thing, how, how do you set up an integrated cross product? Well, since we know the direction, we just need magnitudes. So the current is just some number of amps. I, I'll pull that outside of the integral. So we have mu naught times current over 4 pi. Now inside, um, you know, if you're doing the magnitude of any cross product, just generically, it's the magnitude of Let's say you want to find the magnitude of A cross B, it's the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between the two. Well, here we have DL. That's just DL, it's a little length. 
Uh, the magnitude of r hat is one, and then we need the we need the sine of the angle between those two. So basically, we, we need the sine of this angle here. That's our theta, and that's all over r squared, which is x squared plus y squared. So from our triangle, the sine of that angle is opposite over hypotenuse. That's so x over r. So that leaves us with this expression. Um, and note that y is the variable. That's what changes as you go from segment to segment. So we need our, our bounds on integral going from negative a up to a, from one end to the other end of the wire. And honestly, um, I, I didn't do this myself. I looked it up in the back of the book in an integral table. Some people might plug it into their Inspire. Others might do like a trig substitution. But in the end, when you evaluate this integral, you get, you get uh, what's here in the box. Okay. Now it's important to remember this is only on that axis that bisects the wire. Once you go off the axis, you lose some of that symmetry and then you have a whole new problem to, to solve. And nowadays engineers just plug that into a computer. So there, there's a magnetic field. And the only thing I'll, I'll mention here is what if you get really close? Let's look at this limit here. What if your x value is very small compared to the length of the wire. So if, if you're like a bug and you're really close to wire, it looks like a, a long wire. You can't really see the ends at that point when you get close. So within this limit, um, check out what happens to our answer. It reduces down, simplifies a little bit, to mu naught i over 2 pi x. Well, 2 pi x is the circumference of a circle of radius x. and this is the result that we'd get for a long wire using Ampere's law. Okay, so it, it actually it's kind of cool that it works out this way and gives us an a answer that we're a little more familiar with. But in general, in real life, Biot-Savaz is what you need to find exact answers for any shape, wire, or current that's flowing. Or for that matter, if, if you have point charges that are moving. So I, I hope this helps. Um, with this one case, we'll do another one where we do uh, Biosava with a ring of current. So until then, uh, have a good day.